Hey, Florian Pros, it's Jerry Levinson here, and I wanted to talk about uh, all these one-star reviews that everyone seems to be getting lately, and how to answer it. You know, and these are legitimate one-star reviews. I've done another video in the past about the one-star reviews. In the past, a lot of them were illegitimate. You cut somebody off, uh, somebody doesn't like your politics, maybe you guys didn't wear masks in the store, or uh, they don't like your prices, but anyhow, they didn't do work, uh, you didn't do work for that customer. And I've got four one-star reviews about a post on uh, Go Gilbert in, in our local Facebook group here that I've, um, it was a joke about my daughters. <laughs> I ended up with four one-star reviews, which I actually like because those, those are, they're like gold. I mean, a one-star review that's illegitimate is perfect. Uh, David Bro and his wife Lisa got one uh, complaining that they look orange in the video, which again, it's that's gold. If you get a one-star review like that, don't have that taken down. That thing is fantastic because people will read that and they'll do, they'll come to your defense. They don't like the person who attacks you, especially unfairly uh, for something that has nothing to do with the business. Uh, they won't like that and they'll come do business with you in spite of the reviewer. So leave those up there. I'll help you write a funny response if you want, but you know, those, those things are gold. So what I wanna talk about today is the legitimate one-star reviews. Sometimes we give them, especially nowadays, I mean, everybody's uh, up in angst, uh, have been since the start of COVID and with all the shipping problems that we're having and, and supply issues, um, we're getting a ton of one-star reviews lately. I'm just not my company, but as an industry, these seem to be happening more and more. So it's something we have to deal with. So first of all, the first thing you need to do with a one-star review is take a breath. Um, don't respond right away. I say give it at least two days. Because one, you might go out there and fix it, or you might be handling the issue as we speak. Two, that person may think better of it and take their review down um, but you don't want to start getting into a pissing match before you have an opportunity to maybe resolve the problem. Because if you defend yourself, they're going to defend themselves. So your best bet, wait at least two days before you write a response. Okay, at least two days. You might wait longer. Um, definitely respond though. Uh, so step two is to definitely respond. Um, there's only one case where I might not respond and that's when sometimes somebody writes seven, eight, nine paragraphs and they're clearly insane. So uh, one of the things I like to do is see how that person reviewed other companies. And if all they do is write one star reviews, then you know that's the type of person that is. So you can see that, you can post about that in your review um, I did do that to one reviewer that complained about a salad from another company that she got and she, in her review, she says, is it the end of the world? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, if she's going to review a company like that for a salad, we don't stand a chance, right? So, um, I, I kind of wrote a funny review about that in response, but when you respond to a review, it's very important that you don't talk to the person writing the review because again, that's defending yourself. The reality is, is you have people reading the reviews. That's a judge. Pretend like you're in a courtroom and you are giving your side of the story to the judge and jury because that's exactly who is reading the review. It's the judge. They're judging if they're going to come to your store or not and based on this review. Now, the one star reviews are entertainment for people. So anybody going to your site is going to see that one star review. They're going to read it because it's entertainment and they're not going to read the five star reviews because those people are saying, wow, these guys are great. And you're saying, oh, thank you. Uh, appreciate you uh, doing business with us. So all that stuff says the same stuff. So they don't really read five star reviews, but they will read the one star reviews. Um, and they're not bad in the face of a lot of five star reviews. But when you're responding, it's, um, yeah, we, we did have a problem with this job. We had trouble getting the supplies in on time. We were in touch with her the whole time. So 
Um, and, and we did try to get things and make things better. She wouldn't let our guys back in the home after a while. You know, there are problems and challenges in this industry. We try to overcome it. We try to work with her, but she wouldn't let us back in. Something like that, you know, whatever the truth is. And I know a lot of you people sincerely are trying to help and get the job done correctly for a customer. Sometimes that customer is just not allowing you to do so. Um, and again, going back to the one star review and taking a breath. Uh, one thing I've learned over many years of being in business is Sometimes there's something else going on in that customer's life and they're taking it out on you. So they found out their kids got cancer, they got cancer, a bad car accident, something happened, everything is falling down on them like a house of cards and they're attacking you. That's why you need to give it a couple of days to give that person a chance to maybe, you know, deal with something else that's going on in their life. All right, back to responding. Uh, when you're responding, um, don't, I don't think you should ever apologize if you truly didn't do anything wrong. Apologies uh, validate maybe an unreasonable concern. It is okay to apologize for something that did go wrong, but you apologize once and that's it. Um, but in most part, you know, if you're trying to fix it, great. Go ahead and try and fix it. State that in your review. Um, if it's just truly they're not allowing you to do the job right. Maybe their flooring needs additional work and they won't allow you to do the additional work you need to do. Explain that to the person reading. Yeah. And then step three, I think you should follow up a bad review with kind of a show of gratitude for all the good customers you have, all the good reviews. Hey, we always try to give a five-star experience. That's why we have over 120 five-star reviews uh, between Google, Facebook, and Yelp. And uh, we're truly grateful for all our wonderful customers out there. Um, and we hope to see you and uh, come into the store and uh, we'll take good care of you. You know, again, you're giving yourself a commercial. There's nothing wrong with that because you've got a reader there. It is exactly like giving yourself a commercial. That's what you're doing. So it's like, if you know that they're reading, what do you want to tell them so they do business with you? You know, you don't just have to deal with the review. Um, you got to talk to the reader and encourage them to come into your store for hopefully a five-star experience. Hopefully they understand and take your side. Uh, I, I do think that people that read reviews when they read from unreasonable customers, they're gonna take your side and they're gonna wanna do business with you. So go ahead and respond. If you need any help, again, I'm here for you. Reach out, I enjoy responding to one star reviews there's always a good way to handle it so kind of keep your emotions in check and let's deal with it